I said before that module values and regular values are distinct in OCaml. You can't mix and match between them, and therefore you can't have functions on modules. Although technically speaking that's true, there is something else that's a lot like a function that you can have, and that's called a functor. A functor really is just a module level function. It's a kind of function that can take in a module as input and produce a module as output. Like everything else that we've seen so far with the OCaml module system, it's syntactically a little different from the rest of the values in the language. For a really simple example of functors, let's start off by writing uh, a very small module type and module. So I have a module named A now, and it has a value X inside of it. That value is specified by module type capital X, and indeed I could seal A at that module type. Suppose I wanted to create another module that's just like module A, except its x is one bigger. So think of this as I want to write a function that takes in that module A and produces a new module just with a little change to it. Here's how I can do that with a functor. All right, let's pick apart the pieces of what I just wrote. The module keyword at the beginning of this, remember, is how we start a module definition. It's how we create a module value, just like how the let keyword is how we create regular values and bind them to names. The functor keyword here says I am creating a functor, a function, as it were, from module values to module values. So it takes in a module value and produces a module value. The module value that it takes in is named m here locally, and it's specified to have module type x. We defined x up here above. We already know what that is. The module value that's returned by this functor is the structure here on the right-hand side, and that structure creates a value named x, and what does it bind that to? Whatever x was inside of the input functor plus 1. So all I'm really doing here is the module level equivalent of something kind of like the increment function. The increment function, you remember, looks like this. It takes in an argument x and returns x plus 1. Here I'm taking in a module with an identifier x inside of it and returning another module with an identifier x inside of it. It's just in the output module, it's bound to a value that's one more than in the input module. Let's give this a try in Utah. So notice how I can't just directly apply the effunctor here in Utah. This is the same reason why I can't write, say, something like an anonymous structure right here. I'm not allowed to just directly write module values at Utah's prompt. What I can do is use the module definition syntax to bind the result of that functor application to a module name. Now I have a module named B, and inside of it, the X is one more than the X that was inside of A. I've now got one instead of zero. And I could keep on doing this. I could create C that's one bigger still. So you see how I can apply this functor as a function to other modules and get modules back as results. Just as we learned for functions that there is a syntactic sugar with the keyword fun, there's also syntactic sugar with the keyword functor. Although you can write functors with this anonymous functor version as we did here, you can also write it with the module being on the left-hand side of the equals. So this exactly parallels how there are anonymous functions as well as syntactic sugar for them there are anonymous functors and syntactic sugar for those. One difference, though, is that with functors, you must always specify the module type of the input. You're not allowed to leave off the colon x, not in either place here. And that's for the sake of good type inference, 
the type inference engine in OCaml does require that you specify the input type of the functor. Now the input type for the functor, we know that we can pass in A because it has module type X. Turns out we don't have to seal A at type X. As long as that module can be given that module type, OCaml is happy to have us pass it in here. So notice now that even though I've left off the module type annotation in the definition of A, this code compiles perfectly fine. A just has to match that module type X. It doesn't have to be sealed at it. The syntax for functors really is just a straightforward extension, therefore, of the syntax for module definitions. You just have to write the input modules and their types in one of two places, either on the left-hand side of the equals or on the right-hand side with keyword functor.